access frequency wise. Now there are some characteristics and you for the memories like a unit of transfer. We usually measure it in terms of word which in general the size of integer supposed supported by the machine. Uh, but in this class a word means 32 bit. Just make sure you understand that even if in a TLA computing system is 64 bit a word unless until specified a word by default is 32 bit. That's what the assumption we, we take in this class. Now addressable unit means what is the lowest amount of memory I can access per address. It can be a byte addressable memory, it can be a watt addressable memory, it can be a block addressable memory. Block address means a block consists of multiple words. So we can go and access per address multiple of word together it is called a block. So n equals to the power a where a is the number of bit in the address value and n is the number of addressable unit. So let's see if a memory in general is a block addressable let's say 16 block at a time and like sorry uh, let's say yeah 16 block uh, per address or one block per address sorry not 16 block forget it one block per address and one block contains let's say 16 word then means it is 16 word per address we are talking of here. An unit of transfer is the number of unit can be transferred with a single operation. Okay, It may be a complete byte, Okay, one byte or maybe a complete word that is usually the case for the RAM. It's a complete word and also it's a block like number of blocks you can transfer. Maybe some system allows like a DRAM kind of thing. It, it actually allows multiple unit to be transferred. It's, it's accessibility is, is addressability is what for the DRAM. It's a specific type of RAM, but this unit of transfer is multiple of multiple of word. Like it can in one stroke, it can access, you can access possibly like 256 word or or 512 word at a time. It depends on what type of DRAM you are using. But point is that unit of transfer is not related to the addressable unit. It is a completely independent characteristics of the memory system where it says that per single operation how many units you can transfer. Okay. Now from uh, Access type characteristics, we can uh, divide the memories into mainly four parts. Sequential memory, where we need to go through every data until sequentially it is the desired location, like a storage step. Like the storage step, like let's say I want to write something in the middle of the tape. What I need to do, we need to actually reel down or reel up, whatever you want to say. Uh, this entire tape still we reach the middle of the tape, that head read write mechanism, the head reach the middle of the tape and then we can access read or write on that middle of the tape. So that's a sequential. Where direct access type is we can directly go to the general vicinity of the location and then retrieve the data sequentially searching within that area like a hard disk or CD-ROM. So what happens this this access mechanism can go and place itself kind of is a nearby area like an um, not really pinpointed area on that data we are trying to access but somewhere near it and then it search sequentially within that area. So that's kind that's called a direct access uh, memory. Whereas random access is you absolutely don't have kind of a read write accessing mechanism uh, for the device like in RAM you just supply an address you get back the data it is absolutely has no uh, like electromechanical component associated with that. Uh, that's the reason solid state disks are much faster because there is no access mechanism, electromechanical access mechanism to access certain data uh, from the device. So they're faster. So you basically produce an address, get back the data like USB storage, flashcard, main memory, 
all these are these are example of such random access an associative data is data is retrieved based on a part of its content okay it is not only the address but also it based data retrieval is based on the part of the content itself this definition is not will not be clear right now but wait for our cache memory discussion and this associative type what what is meant by the association it will be clear once we go through the cache memory lectures okay now performance wise some of the characteristics and parameters we are interested to look and do, like understand uh, access time latency sometimes we call it a latency with ta symbol as a ta access time it has two different definition for two different type of memories for a random or associative access memory either random access memory or associative access memory this is access time is defined as time to complete read or write operation from the time point when the address is present to the memory presumably also the control like read or write operation request is also placed along with the address uh, address uh, presentation to the memory so you let's say you you placed in in a in a time period t1 okay that uh, that address and your request and your request completed in let's say t1 plus 4 cycle so that means it takes four cycle to complete your request and that's your access time whereas for the non random access memory like sequential or direct these two type it's a time to place your read and write mechanism at the desired place so that's an read write uh, there's an access time for a non random access memory okay now memory cycle time it's it's related to a particular type of random access memory or certain types of memory so random access memory uh, some example is dram where there is a additional time we need to consider before next access can be done so this is more like we request this type of device some access and its access time is let's say four cycle and after that access i we cannot produce another access read or write so remember it is nothing to do with that one cycle gap between read and write operation it's not that reason this is more or less this devices by technology needs to spend some time within itself to refresh and re-strengthen its content okay uh, so it so every access after every access it needs some downtime you can say a downtime it's not really a power downtime but it's kind of a time to itself to re consolidate itself you can see in terms of that let's not go into the more electrical properties and why it happens of course if you are interested please ask me in class why it is uh, but it has some associated refresh time which we must consider that means my cycle time is your access time plus the refresh time so one access is done then we must have some gap before we start another access request and that that gap is called a refresh time for that memory now transfer rate it is more like an for random access it is one by tc simple reciprocation of the memory cycle time where your tr may be zero or non zero depending on the type of the random access memory if it is a dram there is a refresh time if it is an sram it doesn't have a refresh time okay so that's the but by definition transfer rate is what we are kind of interested is that how many bits per second i can transfer from one like storage to whoever is requesting from the storage okay uh, for non random access memories that is sequential and your direct access memory 
your average transfer time for n bit okay so average transfer time for the n bit is your access time which is like time to place your read write mechanism onto certain uh, certain area and then number of bit transferred by the transfer rate okay so that's the r is the transfer rate so this is known fact this is known fact so so your effectively your average transfer rate for non random access memory is 1 by ta plus n by r where r is given like once we place the read write access on the point when we can start really writing or reading the data till it finishes the read or write the data amount of data uh, that that uh, that characteristics number is already available in terms of r your transfer rate when it is ready to read write okay and ta is the access time to place your read write mechanism on the specific spot so if we take reciprocal of this number ta plus n by r it becomes the average transfer rate for your non-random access memory 